Hello, victorious ones. How are you doing? Hope everybody's having a wonderful, wonderful day. I just felt like I needed to come on here to share something with you guys. And so share this broadcast. We're going to flow in the spirit and see what the Holy Spirit has to say to us. On the second day of January 2020. Amen. And so if you have your Bible, I want you to turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Amen. And so this is going to encourage those of you who are going through situations where it just feels like your back is against the wall and it just seems like the situation is not moving, it's not changing. And so we're going to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say about the situation. And so invite your friends in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for waking us up this morning. Father, we thank you for your love, for your kindness, for your mercy, and for your grace, oh God. Father, we thank you for who you are. You are King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the ending, Father. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. Father God, we stand in the courts of heaven right now. And we put on the whole armor, Father. We soak ourselves in the blood and we ask, oh God, for forgiveness of all of our sins. Father, please forgive the sins of our households and our bloodline in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for forgiving us. Merciful God, we thank you for cleansing us with the redeeming, atoning blood of your son, Jesus. Merciful Father God, we thank you for your angels, millions of angels who are released right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus to help us. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. They are in camp all around us, fiery chariots all around us, protecting us. We will not dash our feet against a stone. Father, I thank you for holding us up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Father, I thank you for the hedge of thorns that's around us and our families and friends and tribes. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we are protected. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for the blessings that you are releasing upon us, oh God, the spiritual blessings, the marital blessings, parental blessings. Father, I thank you for uncommon blessings being released right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for, for opening up the blessed doors. Oh God, we shut every door that's not of you and we seal them with the blood of Jesus. But Father God, open up uh, the blessed doors for us. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, open them up. Oh God, and Father, we step right in or we step right out. Whatever the season is for us, Father God, we thank you that the doors are open. And behold, I stand at the door and I'm knocking. I'm knocking. Father, I thank you that you have you've given us the keys of the kingdom, oh God. And so we can unlock the blessed doors, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Things that were held up. Father, I thank you for divine breakthroughs right now in the name of Jesus. It will not be by our power. It will not be by our might, but it will be by your spirit, Father. I thank you for unlocking our blessings, Father, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we thank you in advance, oh God, for all of the open doors, the blessed open doors in 2020, oh God. And we promise to give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, oh God, all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise belong to you, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And Holy Spirit, right now, I decrease that you would increase and that you will say what you need to say, oh God. 
I am just your vessel. And Father, I'm here to learn what you have to say, Father. I'm taking notes in the name of Jesus. I seal this prayer. I seal this message with the blood. Father, I cover this broadcast, our, our social media accounts. Father, our websites. I cover them with the blood. I cover the seven continents. There shall be complete deliverance. Father, I thank you for complete revival in the seven continents in the name of Jesus. Father, I release the blood upon the continents, upon the five oceans. Oh God, the grace, your grace, oh God. I thank you for your grace being released. Father, you promise. Father God, that your glory will cover the earth. Oh God, as the waters covers the sea. Oh God, I thank you for the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord being released right now in our situations oh God in the name of Jesus father I thank you hallelujah for the glory of the Lord hallelujah for your presence father with us right now in the name of Jesus glory to God glory to God glory to God amen 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 I'm ready to eat what the Lord has to say and so there's some names that we're going to see as we read from Second Chronicles 20. I'm reading this for the whole year. I've been reading this since last year. We're going we're gonna to stay right there because this speaks of just our walk with the Lord. This is always going to be what we encounter. We're going to encounter the enemy trying to come at us and we have to know how to respond accurately. Amen. And so I bless everyone who's listening to me. I don't even know who's on here. Isaac, I believe you're on here. Salisha, Latoya, Tamara. Blessings to you, Tamara. In the name of Jesus. So if you have your Bible, just go on ahead and um, take it out. Go to 2 Chronicles 20. In the name of Jesus. And tomorrow I've been talking about the, um, the palm tree for like months. And so I look at your name and I'm just thinking about the palm tree and how the palm tree is always facing upward. Always so beautiful and upright. Even the temple... In the Old Testament, Solomon put the, the palm, uh, the pictures of the palm engraved in the walls of the temple. And so the palm is just representing God's people. The Bible said, I believe in Psalm 2, that the righteous will flourish like a palm tree, flourish like a palm tree and, glow, and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Amen. And so I love the, the palm. I even have the palm um, in my living room. And so I bless you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We flourish like a palm tree and we grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Thank you, Father. Okay, so let's let's get to the word. There's some names that you're going to see in this chapter that we need to pray attention to. Everything that's in the Bible, you want to make sure that you pray attention to things around you. Behold, that means you got to see, you got to pay attention, you got to pray attention to it, okay? And so this is going to encourage somebody. Some of the names that you're going to see is Jehoshaphat. With his name means Yahweh has judged. And so you know that our God is the judge of all judges. And we always go to the courts of heaven for justice. He said, I love justice. Isaiah 61. Amen. And so God has given us justice. And you can go on ahead and write that down. I decree and declare that the judge... Our judge, Yahweh, is giving us justice. The thief has been caught and he must give us back seven times what he has stolen from us in the name of Jesus Christ. And so you want to decree and declare that according to the book of Job 22, 28, where it says when you decree and declare a thing, it shall be established and God's light will shine upon your way. And then you have clarity. Amen. And so go on ahead and decree and declare that God is giving you justice. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. And so the next name I want you to pray attention to is Ziz. It talks about Ziz in, the, in, in this chapter, Z-I-Z. -Z, and it means flower, branch, or locket of hair. A lock of hair. So the Lord confirmed his word. I've been seeing blossom. Yesterday I saw Thalia, and Thalia means to, to bloom. And so God's word is blossoming and blooming in your life in the name of Jesus. 
It means branch. The Lord, the Lord showed me branch yesterday. Those of you who are on our podcast, I put it on there yesterday. The Lord just out of nowhere gave me branch. And, you know, Christ said in John 15, I am the vine, you are the branches. But all throughout the Old Testament, Jesus Christ is the branch of Jesse. Amen. And so we are, we are part of the branch. We're part of God's family. And we bear much fruit because we are planted by the rivers of living waters. Amen. And so the things that you, the things that you've been praying to God for that are according to his will, I decree and declare that they are blossoming in the name of Jesus and the lock of hair in the Bible here means glory. And so the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. The glory of the Lord is upon us. Amen. You, you want God's glory, God's presence, God's majesty, God's beauty, God's favor. It's who he is. It's his essence. OK, and so the glory of the Lord is being revealed in our situation and, and his will is blossoming and blooming and bearing fruit in our lives in the name of Jesus. And so you want to decree and you want to declare that because the enemy wants you to think that everything is dried up, that, that God, God hasn't heard you. But God says, my word will not return back unto me void, but it will be accomplished. And that is in Isaiah 55. You go and read it. It says the same way the water comes down and the snow, it comes down in and it blessed the soil, it blessed the earth the same way with God's word. When God's word shows up, you're, it's going to be fulfilled. God's, God's perfect will is being done, is being blossomed, bloomed in your life, in your marriage, in your children, in your ministry, in your body, in your soul, in your spirit, in your finances, in the name of Jesus Christ. And so Ziz, Z-I-Z, -Z, the next word you want to pay attention to, the next name is Jeruel. It means fear. You are to fear the Lord only, not fear anybody else. Reverent, you know, reverence the Lord. It also means vision of God. We need to make sure in 2020, you have the vision of God, a 2020 vision of God in the name of Jesus. It also means founded by God. And so we are established in the Lord. Everything that we're doing has to be established, has to be found, has to be founded in the Lord God, because that's how it's going to be able to bear fruit. Amen. And so the next name you want to pay attention to is Jehaziel. It means Yah looks or God sees. And so sometimes you're going through those big situations and it feel like, okay, God, where are you? Don't you see me? Well, he's El Roi. He sees you. The eyes of the Lord are roaming the earth to look for those who are righteous. Is that you? Is that you? And when he sees you, Yahweh Jireh, the God who sees us and he will provide for you. And God is providing a ram in the bush for you. And so you need to decree and declare that right now because this is a spiritual battle and death and life are in the power of your tongue. And so you have to be able to know what the word of the Lord says, speak it out of your mouth, believe it in your heart and watch God, watch God answer by fire like Elijah. In the name of Jesus. And so the next one is Zechariah. Z, the Z-E one, not Z-A. Z-E. Zechariah means Yah remembers. Or Yah reviews. And so the Lord has been looking upon you and me. Right? He, he has remembered us. He has remembered. He didn't forget. Okay? When you pray, he said, before you pray, I already heard you. And if you call on me, I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that you don't even know. Jeremiah 33 verse three. So those of you, you felt, oh, my God, I'm going through it. I've been crying and it feels like the millstone is crushing me. But because you have you have not given up, your faith became like a millstone that crushed the enemy. OK, the millstone weighs about like three thousand or more pounds. Right. And so because you have not given up and you've been walking by faith. Your faith has crushed the enemy. Amen. So, so listen, what the, what the enemy meant for evil, God said, I meant it for your good. I remembered you and I'm fighting your battles for you. Just stand still. Calm down. I know you've been crying. I know it, it, it didn't feel good feeling like you were being crushed. It didn't feel good. Everybody knowing your business, things looking like it's not, it's not working out in your favor. I know because I know all. I'm omniscient. I'm the God who knows everything. And so I want you to know that I remember you. And I've been watching you and I'm watching over my word to perform and fulfill my word concerning you. Like I told my prophet, Jeremiah, in the name of Jesus Christ, glory to God.
Glory to God. The next name you want to pray attention to is Benaniah. It means son of the Lord or built by Yah. And so I love the theme of building because that's going to be part of our marriage boot camp next Saturday. And so the Lord is simply confirming his word. Benaniah means son of the Lord. And who is the, the, the son? The, I mean, we're all children of God, right? If you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So you think about Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him will never perish, but will have eternal life. Amen. But we are also children of God, sons and daughters of God. Amen. And so we are a royal priest of the holy nation built up by God. Hallelujah. And so if you're children of the king, that means you're blessed and highly favored. Amen. And you have the keys. You, go, you get to go to the throne of grace. He said, come boldly to my throne of grace. And all that you need is there. And no good thing will I withhold from you in the name of Jesus. Because I see you. And I promise that they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so right now, begin to call upon the name of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your hands and give God the highest praise, which is hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the next name is J.L. It says, may God live. God shall live. It means treasured, treasured of God or God is strong and God heals. So for those of you who are sick in your body. Receive it by the stripes of Jesus. You are healed. Amen. God is your healer. He sends his word and he heals you. Receive the word of God. You are healed by the stripes of Jesus. Isaiah 53 is your birthright in the name of Jesus. Your God is strong and mighty and he fights your battle for you. You don't have to prove anything to anybody. God is fighting for you. And so it's God's timing. And so all you must do is stand still and be obedient to him. He is strong and mighty. He doesn't need your help. He is going to fight for you. He's your father and you are always going to win. And I'm speaking to myself because I've been going through it and the enemy wants me to give up and uh -uh, may God live. Uh, may, listen, God is living forever for God's will. His perfect will and God will live in the name of Jesus. We are, we are treasured of God and God said, I will give you hidden treasures, secret riches and treasures. I'm going to show you where to get the treasures because you are my treasured one in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the next name you want to pray attention to is Mataniah. It means gift of Yahweh. And so if you're listening to me, I just want to remind you, I want to remind you that you are a gift. You are a gift in the earth. Amen. And that's where you want to click on that little heart to confirm because we're going to touch and agree. With the word of with the word of God, you are a gift of Yahweh, your family, a gift from Yahweh. And so the enemy wants you to look at yourself like you're nothing. He wants you to have doubts and fears. No, 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 no. You are a gift. Amen. Glory to God. And the gift of all gifts lives inside of you. The spirit of Jesus. Hallelujah. The gift of the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And so you already know that you are established in God. You're blessed. You're established in God and you are blessed. The next one you're going to pay attention to. Pray attention to the Levites. The priests. Levi means joining or attached. We are joint heirs with Jesus. So you know we're going to get our blessings, right? And whom God has joined together. Married folks, this is for you. Levi. Whom God has joined together. Let nobody separate nobody. Amen. And so anything that's coming at your marriage, remember Levi, Levi, and you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Amen. Join to God because of Jesus. Amen. You ready? So Levi and, and let's, let's, let's go, let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. For those of you, you feel like you're nothing but dry bones. Hear the word of the Lord. Mm. Prophesy to your dry bones. And they're going to join together and form a vast army for the Lord. The enemy is defeated. The army of heaven is rising up in the name of Jesus. Listen, go read Revelation 19. Heaven's army, they're bad coming on the horse to fight your battles for you in the name of Jesus. And we are part of the army. And all we need to do is worship and praise God. We don't have to fight with anybody. We don't have to do any of that. All we must do is to worship. Why? Because the enemy truly wants your worship.
That's why he told Jesus, I'll give you everything. All I want you to do is to bow down and worship me. The devil is beating on you so you can worship him. And we will not worship him. We only worship Yahweh. We are joined to Yahweh. We are married to him and him alone. And we will not commit spiritual adultery in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's keep on going. The next one you want to pray attention to is Asaph. You know, Asaph, they're the musicians. And then the name Asaph means gathers, gathers. And I think about rally, being healed, coming together, being healed, but gathers. Listen, it's harvest time. It's harvest time. Go and gather, go, go and gather your, your crops in the name of Jesus. Get the pitchfork. The Lord showed me pit, pitchfork last week. And I'm like, pitchfork, what's that? Go and gather your harvest. It's harvest time. And don't let the enemy trick you out of your harvest. That's when he, he, that's when he shows up and he tells you, God didn't hear you. God not going to answer you. You might as well divorce your spouse. You might as well just give up. Your kids ain't never going to act right. You might as well, you going to die. That's the devil. Because guess what? He knows harvest is right, right outside. But behold, I do a new thing. If you can't see it, you're going to miss your harvest. God said, Isaiah 43, I believe it is. Behold, I do a new thing. It springs forth. Don't you perceive it? I'm making a way for you. I'm causing growth to happen in your wilderness. But you have to have eyes to see it in the name of Jesus. And the next one is um, Hazon or Hazon Tamar, which means split palm. It means to divide. The only thing that's divided is going to be the kingdom of the devil. Okay, we release confusion and division into the camp of the enemy. Amen. And we decree and declare that we are unified in the Lord and we are God's palm. We're flourishing like a palm tree and growing like a cedar in Lebanon in the name of Jesus. And then the book Chronicles. Chronicles means um, annals of time. Now is the time for your breakthrough. Now is the time for your harvest in the name of Jesus. And it's a yearly blessing. It's coming. It's, it's, it's perennial. It's, it's on repeat year after year. Perpetual blessings. Amen. And then the next word is Tekoa, means trumpet, or that is confirmed. Hmm. Amen? It means to bring forth a sudden force. To bring forth a sudden force. The kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violent ones... We're taking it by force. We are God's battle ram. We are his battle axe. And we're breaking down every Jericho wall. And we're blowing the trumpet as we're doing it. The ram's horn. We're blowing it. We're blowing it. We're blowing it. We're blowing it. And Jericho has fallen. The Lord showed me something. He showed me something. He said in the, in the word, Jericho was shut up. Nobody was getting in and nobody was getting out. And some of you, the enemy done locked you in. Mm. Done trap you. Okay, but let me tell you, the Lord said, break that thing down. Break that thing down. With your with the with your praise, the trumpet, you blow that trumpet, meaning that you, you you're sounding, you're making a joyful noise unto the Lord to let the walls come down so you can be released, so you can receive your breakthrough, so you can receive your deliverance. It's not time to be crying, it's time to blow the trumpet, it's time to blow the ram's horn, it's time to lift up your voice and begin to worship and praise the Lord so you can receive your breakthrough in the name of Jesus so that God's word can be confirmed. He only fulfill and confirm his word. So you got to be able to begin to, to release that sound of the word so that God will remember his word and, and he will remember Isaiah 55 and he said, wait, 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 my word must be fulfilled. It must be confirmed. It must be established in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why the enemy wants to silence you. That's why he wants you to be depressed. But I, I listen, open up your mouth and begin to praise the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Yahweh. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. And when you confirm something, it's firmly established. It will never change. It means it's rooted. It's committed. It's seasoned. And so God's word is confirmed in our lives. Hallelujah. And nothing can change it. Nothing can change it. Not the problem that you've been facing, not the war that's coming against you. God said, my perfect will will be completed, will be fulfilled in your life. I'm hastening my word. I'm looking over my word to perform it in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now let's go to 2 Chronicles 20. 
Now that we have those names, when we're reading it, we understand who Judah praise Jerusalem, city of peace. The enemy been trying to rob you of your praise. Don't want you to praise God. Don't want you to be at peace. You got to hold your peace. <laughs> hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle. Amen. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord, no matter what you're going through. And so we're going to follow Second Chronicles 20 all year. All year. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And so it says after this, the Moabites and the Ammonites with some of the Meunites, they came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. And you can look up their names later just to see what the Lord um, will speak to you. Of. But, but remember, Moab and Ammon, they were conceived in a nasty way. So you already know. They, they, mm -mm, no. So they came to wage war against Jehoshaphat, whose names mean Yahweh has judged. So the enemy always going to wage war. That's why you need Ephesians 6. Go put on that armor. And when you feel the belt of truth slipping off of your waist, you better buckle it tighter. You better put on the breastplate of righteousness because there's always a spiritual battle taking place. And we need to be trained in spiritual warfare. Put on your armor and soak yourself in the blood in the name of Jesus. Because the vast army is coming. It is what it is. But nobody's afraid. No, but nobody is afraid of the vast army. Now, when you have heaven's army fighting for you. Amen. And so it says in verse two, some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. So the vast army been coming against your, your spouse, been coming against your marriage, been coming against your children, been coming against your body, been coming against your ministry. It's been coming against your finances. A vast army, but they don't know that God fights our battle. Exodus 14, 14 and all the other verses. It says our God is a warrior and he fights our battles for us. And you need to remember that. I need to remember that every time we're going through warfare, that God is fighting our battles for us in the name of Jesus. Who glory to God. I'm listening. I'm over here sweating. I'm trying to, con I'm trying to contain myself because I've been going through it. <laughs> but the Lord, as I'm going through it and the enemy's talking, I'm like, listen, I'm the wrong one to mess with because I, 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 I listen, I pray attention so I can know how he's trying to like come, you know, so I can learn his, learn about the tactics and such. And then the Lord showing me stuff too. And I'm like, okay, the enemy's after your worship in, in, in the midst of your battle and your, and your warfare, the enemy wants, he wants your worship and that's what he wants. Okay, that's why you look at the world and they they bowing down to him because you know they pro he promised them things and and they people bowing down and selling their, selling their souls. We're not doing that. <laughs> We're only bowing down to the King of Kings, Yahweh, Amen. And so the vast army is coming, and they're coming from Hazan Tamar, the split palm, right? And verse three, alarmed. Jehoshaphat was alarmed. Okay. What does the word alarmed mean? So the enemy wants you to be alarmed. So let's look at the definition for alarmed. Alarmed means to cause to feel frightened, disturbed, or in danger. Okay. He wants you to panic. He wants you to be afraid and scared, frightened, startled. He wants you to be unnerved and distressed, agitated. He wants you to be upset, flustered, ruffled, disconcerted. He wants you to be shocked and just being dismayed, disturbed, terrorized. Okay. Petrified. That's what the goal is, right? Oh my God. What am I going to do? Oh my God. <laughs> and before you know it, you don't had a stroke. You don't had a heart attack. You understand? We have to maintain our peace in 2020. We should have learned from 2019. Some of us went through hell <laughs> in 2019. It was to prepare us for now. Now we, okay, we already been through that. Okay, we already, okay. And God, God, God always showed up. You see the pattern? You went through it all last year. And God, God showed up every time. He may, he may, he may not have shown up when you wanted him to show up. But didn't he show up? He's an on-time God. Amen? Glory to God. Glory to God. And so, alarmed, Jehoshaphat, you know, when he found out he was alarmed and he was nervous and, 
You guess what he did? He resolved to inquire of the Lord. He inquired of the Lord. And I, what, what did he decide he was going to do after he inquired of the Lord? Because the first thing you must do when, when the enemy is attacking you, you're going to inquire of the Lord. So I need somebody to write that down. I need to inquire of the Lord first and foremost. I need to inquire of the Lord. Father, you said seek first the kingdom of heaven and your righteousness and all that I need will be added unto me. I'm inquiring of you. What should I do? I have a, a, a difficult situation that's happening. What do you want me to do? Okay, so you want to inquire of the Lord. And the next thing that King Jehoshaphat did, he proclaimed a fast for all of Judah. We're not going to eat. You know, in America especially, everybody want to eat. There's a restaurant. Every other, every other um, building is a restaurant, right? And so the enemy just want us to eat, 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 and feed the flesh. But you need to give up some food this year. If you haven't been doing so, you should be fasting every week. And you ask the Lord what type of fast you should be doing. Okay? Inquire of the Lord. But if you want to win a, the spiritual battle, you need to be fasting and praying. And this, that's, that's like Bible study one-on-one. Believers, you know, foundational, what, lessons one-on-one. You should be fasting and praying every week, okay? And so they're fasting, and in verse 4, the people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. They didn't go to their job, their boss. They didn't go to the neighbor. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. And so we have to get into the habit of seeking God first. There's Bible verses all throughout the Bible that talks about seeking God. I think I prayed one of those, some of those yesterday. Yes, seek God. Amen. And so I like how it said they gathered together because Asaph means to gather. Right. You got to gather. You got to rally together. Don't go off by yourself. The enemy going to trick you when you're going through it. He going to want you to be by yourself somewhere. Remember the person in the Bible who was by himself? The man who was walking down the street and they beat him up? Remember, I think he was going to Jericho or somewhere. The Good Samaritan story. He was walking by himself and got the beat down of his life. You cannot walk by yourself. I'm trying to tell you. You better find your tribe. For a long time, I'm just like, you know, I just want to do, I, this me, I don't got time for people because people, da, 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 da. but there's a, there's a tribe, there's a church out there for you, a Bible believing church, a prophetic church that's going to teach the word of God. You need to be in a church, okay? And then you need to have, you know, your tribe, those who are assi assigned to you and you are assigned to them because if you try to go off by yourself, you're going to get beat up. You notice Paul and Silas were together. David and Jonathan were together. Ruth and Naomi were together. You need, you need to have fellowship. I know that we think we're so strong. But you're going to get beat up being ignorant. Don't do that. You need to have fellowship. And fast and pray. Because the Bible says, um, where two or three are gathered in my name. Touching and agreeing. God said, I'm going to show up. I'm there with you and I'm going to answer you. Amen. And then he said, um, what's the other verse that he said? Um, one can chase a thousand, but two of us can put 10,000 to flight. And so sometimes you just probably need reinforcement. That's how we have our prayer rallies and we have, we have our Bible boot camp and we have, I mean, the, the marriage boot camp and then we have our Bible study boot camp, right? So find out where you fit, find your tribe and, and, and team up, be joined, join to get Levi, join to your tribe. I'm talking about people who are anointed, loving God, serving God, obeying God. Amen. And so King Jehoshaphat, they all went to God. And in verse five, it says, then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in front of the new courtyard. And he said, so they're, they're, they're having a congregation. They're like, you know, praying to God. And he, he reminded God of what God said. He said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? 
You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. He's telling God who he is. The God is powerful. Power and might are in your hand and no one can withstand you. He's reminding God of how powerful God is. He's not magnifying his problems. You notice that he's not magnifying his fears. He's magnifying the Lord. And so whatever it is that you're going through, make sure you're magnifying the Lord. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together because you know when you begin to praise God, the Bible says he inhabits the praise of his people. Amen. And so in verse seven, he said, our God. Did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people, Israel, and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? It's like he's reminding God that don't you remember? And in verse eight, it says they have lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying if calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress and you will hear us and save us. That's the promise. When we're going through, even when we're not going through, God hears us and he's going to save us. And so now you can rejoice. Whatever, that's the verdict in the courts of heaven. God has reviewed your case. And he's saying to you, I've heard you. I remembered you. I'm saving you. I'm saving your marriage. I don't care how what it looks like. I'm saving your marriage. I'm saving your children because I promise you that the sanctified spouse make the whole house holy. I promise you that your children will be taught by the Lord and great will be their peace. I promise that before you prayed, I will answer you. Amen. And something else the Lord just reminded me of why we need to be together. When you read in the book of Daniel 10, I believe even the angel, Daniel's angel had to call for help. I, I pray somebody is hearing that part. When Daniel's angel met up with that, that princip that principality, he had to call for backup. Daniel prayed and the moment Daniel prayed, the answer showed God, God released the answer. You understand? But in the second heaven, warfare broke out. And they detained, locked up Daniel's angel. Y'all go read it. He had to call for Michael, the archangel, to get the breakthrough. Now, if the angels need backup. Imagine us, Lone Rangers. That was, that, that was for you. Don't let the enemy trick you anymore. Be delivered from that. Amen. And so verse 10, it says, he's reminding the Lord, but now here are the men from Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, three of them, three demons coming after us, whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade when they came, to, came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. Verse 12, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And I love that. It keeps you humble. We don't know what to do, Father God. This is too much. The mortgage payment, Father, you already know we don't have it. Father, you know the enemy has been fighting us. But Father God, we don't have all the power, but you have all the power. All glory, all power, all majesty is in your hand. Father, you're powerful. And you can take out this vast army of debt. You can take out this vast army of marital strife. Father God, you can take out this vast army that's attacking us. We don't know how to do it, but our eyes are on you. And Father, you promised in Psalm 121 that we need to lift up, our, lift up our eyes onto you because all of our help is coming from you. The God who never slumbered, the one who never sleeps. Father God, we are looking to you in the name of Jesus. And that's the posture that we need to have going forward in 2020 and the years to come in the name of Jesus. We need to pray. We need to fast. We need to seek God because he's the only one that can help us because our warfare is spiritual. It's spiritual. You see, Dan Daniel's angel was locked up 
detained, blocked. And so he had to call for help from Michael. And so right now we ask for God to release Michael and all his angels to help us to break through in the name of Jesus Christ. And in verse 13, it says all the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones. They stood there before the Lord. And that's how our families shall be. We will be unified in praising the Lord. We, we will be on one accord in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, how can two walk together unless they agree? And so I speak unity upon our households in the name of Jesus. And it says in verse 14, this is the part I was waiting for. Verse 14. When they were worshiping God and they were praising his name. And the Bible says, then the spirit of the Lord came on Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite and a descendant of Asaph. And, 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 and in the assembly, that's the spirit of God came on him and they made sure they ran down who he was back to Asaph, the worship leader in the Old Testament. Man, the one, his name means gather. Oh my God. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And what does Jay, what, what does his name mean? What, what, did, what does Jehaziel mean? Yah looks, Yah sees. And the spirit of the Lord came on him. Hallelujah. Because all you need is the, is the Holy Ghost to be released. The Bible says in the last days, the book of Joel 2, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Oh, men will dream dreams, even the servants. And so I don't care what, 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 what position you have in this world. I don't care if you're a doctor. I don't care if you, if you're homeless, I don't care what it is you're going through as you begin to call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, his spirit will be released, will be released upon you, the anointing of the living God. And where the spirit of the Lord God is, there is liberty in the name of Jesus. There is victory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And being filled with the spirit, Jehaziel began to prophesy in the name of Jesus. He said, listen, King Jehoshaphat. And all who live in Judah and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says to you. Because when the spirit is poured out. God is speaking to you. You need to pray attention. Behold, I'm speaking to you. Look with your spiritual eyes. Listen with your spiritual ears. It's time to tune in your spirit. Connect your spirit to God's spirit. It's time to pray, to pray attention so you don't miss what God is saying to you. And today, this is a prophetic word for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, he said, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid, Kimberly. Do not be afraid, Latoya. Do not be afraid. All of you are listening to me including myself. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. I have not given you a spirit of fear. Didn't I tell Joshua, be strong and courageous. He said, don't be afraid. I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Do not be afraid of that, that doctor's report. Do not be afraid of your financial situation. Do not be afraid about what you're seeing around you. And don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged because you are bold as a lion. You are as courageous as a lion. Do not be afraid of this vast army. Whatever your vast army is, God said, do not be afraid for the battle is not yours. The battle belongs to God. Let me say it one more time. The battle is not yours. The battle belongs to God. He will not share the battle with you. That's the same way he will not share his glory with you because when he fights this battle for you. He wants to get all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. The battle is not yours. Release it to God. Release it back to the warrior, the mighty champion, the mighty warrior, our God. He's a man of war. He fights your battles for you and he wants you to know that you are victorious in the name of Jesus. The battle is not yours, but 
God's. And that's verse 15 of Second Chronicles 2015. And this year, when you're going through those vast armies, remember that the army is not for you to fight. It's for God to fight it in the name of Jesus. And God began to give them instruction. That's why you need to pray attention. You, you, you need to listen. When you're listening, that's praying. I know many didn't know that, but when you speak to God and, and the other part of prayer is listening. Listen to what God is saying to you. Tomorrow, march down against them. That thing that's been coming at you. It's been coming at you and trying to oppress you like, like, like the millstone tied around your neck. It's been trying to oppress you and God said no more. No more. Go against it. Pulverize that demonic millstone that, that's been trying to crush you. Come against that suicidal spirit. Come against that depression. Come against all the lies of the enemy. Come against the poverty. Come against the fornication. Come against all of that. Come against it. Lift up the shield of faith. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And so it says, go, go down tomorrow against them. And, and God began to expose the devil. There will be exposure. God's going to reveal things to you. They will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz. And Ziz means powerful, strong. Um, you know, it means um, it means flower, branch, a lock of hair. It means God's going to get the glory. The branch is Jesus. Flower, God's will is going to blossom, turn into a flower. Amen. That's what Ziz means. And so they, they will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz. And you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeruel. And what does Jeruel mean? Jeruel means fear, vision of God, founded by God. Amen. And you will not have to fight this battle. Verse 17. And so now I know why number 17 means victory. I, I kept on seeing that and I was trying to find like proof. Okay. Second Chronicles 20, 17. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions, stand firm, stand firm and see the deliverance the Lord will give to you, Judah and Jerusalem. OK, so stand still. Don't try to do things your own way. The enemy going to come at you and say, you should do this. You should do that and have you all scatterbrained. No, you stand firm. Stand firm. And people ask you, what are you going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do, but God going to do it. God going to show me. God going to give me the answer. And I'm not talking about being religious. Some people have been waiting on God for 10 years and they won't make a move. No, you have a religious demon on you and you need to be delivered. You got a Pharisee, Sadducee spirit. We talk about people who are listening so they, they can make their move. It's like playing chess. And so you take your position. You stand firm and you see the deliverance the Lord's going to give you. Judah and Jerusalem. Right? And it says... Do not be afraid. He remind them again, the prophetic word. Do not be afraid. This is all verse 17. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow. Today you get your instructions. Tomorrow you go out and you face them. That's why you can't be in a hurry. One of the characteristics of the Holy Spirit is patience. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles, right? So you need to wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he will strengthen your heart. Today, God going to give you the download. He going to give you the strategy, right? And then tomorrow you go. Go out to face them tomorrow. Consecrate yourself today. That's what Joshua told God's people when they were getting ready to cross the Jordan. We're going to consecrate ourselves first and then we're going to go. Amen. And so tomorrow you're going to face them and the Lord will be with you. The Lord will be with you. And so in verse 18, Jehoshaphat, he bowed down with his face to the ground and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem. And they fell down and they began to worship the Lord because God, God answered. God gave him a breakthrough. Through Jehaziel. And it says, then some Levites from the Kohathites and the Korahites, they stood up and they began to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. Okay? That's a voice of victory. I mean, they were, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right? They were praising God because God basically just gave them all the blueprint of the battle plan, right? And they believe God. That's the coolest thing. They believed and they began to worship God. Do you believe the word of the Lord today? Do you believe the word of the Lord? Those of you who are listening, because some people you listen and you don't believe. Okay? But those of you who believe, do you believe the report of the Lord today? That's just type, I believe. I believe. I need to see who's going to respond before I go on. I want you to write, I believe. If you, if you believe, tell the truth. I believe, and I want you to click on the hearts. I believe. Let me write that down in my notebook. And please share this broadcast. It's going to bless somebody. I, I'm a, I, I can listen to this on repeat for the rest of the year because you already know. I believe. Wow. I believe, Lord Jesus. Isaiah 53. I believe your report, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Destiny said, I believe. Kimberly said, I believe. Isaac said, I believe. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Justified Fisher said, I believe. There you go. So I already have a good amount of people. I have one, two, three, four, five. Five is the number of grace. Father, we thank you for your grace, your power, your love, your favor. In the name of Jesus. Celestia said, I believe. Come on now. Bishop said, I believe. Thank you, Father God. Completion and perfection, new beginning. Latoya said, I believe. Okay, you guys ready? So it says, they're praising God. And that was the next day, verse 20, 2020. Early in the morning, make sure you always seeking God early in the morning. Okay, make sure when you um seeking God, pray early in the morning, midnight. Okay, you, you just want to make sure you pray before you start your day. Okay, early in the morning, they left the desert of Tekoa. What does Tekoa mean? Tekoa means trumpet. It means that is confirmed. It means to bring forth a sudden force. Okay, so they left the desert of Tekoa. Okay, they're getting ready to go in, honey. And as they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, listen to me, Judah. And the people of Jerusalem. Oh my God. I felt that thing. I, when God is for you. Who can be against you? Listen to me Judah. And the people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God. And you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets. And you will be successful. And let's get the King James version on that one. The King James version is like a fiery hammer. It just goes right to your heart. It says, hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe the Lord your God, and so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. And so, Father God, I believe you, O God, and I decree and declare that I am established. Father God, I believe your prophets and I am prospering because Jeremiah 29 11, Father, you said, for I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Father, I thank you for your word being fulfilled right now in the name of Jesus. And so after King Jehoshaphat, you know, encouraged them to believe God and God's prophets in verse 21, it says, after consulting the people. Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness. And as they went out at the head of the army saying, it says the, 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 the praise and worship team went ahead of the army. That's, that's why we need to have anointed people singing in the church. It, like we need to have, a, the, we don't, because we understand that they're going ahead of the army. And in order for us to be victorious, the, the, the worship and praise has to be, has to be clean. It has to be clean. And so we got to make sure our vessels are clean and begin to praise the Lord because that's how we're going to get the victory. They went ahead of the army, ahead of the army. That's so different than society. But with God's way, it's so different. And so they, they, they got up and they began to sing, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. They, they're like singing and carrying on. And the army is in the back. 
And in verse 22, as they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah and they were defeated. Hands down. There you go. <laughs> 22. Oh my goodness. Look at that. They got, the, the people didn't even fight anything. The, God's people didn't fight. It didn't say anything about God's people fighting. They began to sing. The Lord set ambush. Who set the ambush? The Lord against the enemy. And the enemy was defeated. And in verse 23, the Ammonites and the Moabites, they rose up against the men from Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. So the enemy is fighting themselves. And so our enemies that came at us one way, according to Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14, one of the verses says the enemies will come at you one way and they will flee from you seven different ways. They will be annihilated. And we understand this is talk about spiritual warfare. And so we talk about killing their powers. Amen. We talk about destroying and demolishing their plots in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And it says after they finished slaughtering the men from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. And so I speak destruction into the camp of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. The plots that they were coming at us with, it's not going to work. It's not going to work because we already blew, we, we're blowing the trumpets and, 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 and Jericho walls are falling down in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. It says they help to destroy one another. And so all them problems that was coming at you, what, what, what was meant for your evil, God said, listen, I'm turning around for your good. Just go ask Joseph real quick in the name of Jesus. Begin to praise. Yes, Latoya said praise is a powerful weapon. Get your praise and worship music together. Begin to praise God. Worship, worship him in spirit and in truth. Those are the true worshipers. Amen. And you have to have faith. So if you don't have any faith, God said you can't please me. So as you're singing to God and as you're worshiping and as you're praying and fasting, you have to believe. You have to believe. Believe God's prophets. Believe God. Amen. And so in verse 21, when the men of Judah came to the place that overlooked the desert and they looked toward the vast army. Remember, the, the army is big that was coming at them. And they're looking at the vast army. And guess what? They, they saw only dead bodies lying on the ground. So that thing that was coming at you, that vast army is dead. Go ahead and write that down. It is dead in the name of Jesus. It, I'm writing it down for myself. It is dead. No weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you have a right to condemn. Isaiah 54 is your birthright in the name of Jesus. That thing is dead. That demonic plot is dead. That sickness is is roasted with Holy Ghost fire is dead. We bind them, cast them out into the abyss in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Glory. Whatever it is, you know your personal business. You know what's been coming against, against you. You know what your vast army is. We speak deliverance to our lives, to our children, to our spouse, to our ministries, to our businesses, to our finances, to our bodies. Some of us been going through it. God done told you what your answer is. This, this is your prophetic word. It says they saw only dead bodies lying on the ground. No one had escaped. No one had escaped. God's angels, Psalm 35, chasing our enemies right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, I thank you for releasing your angels. This was God's angels fighting against these people. My God. Thank you. Thank you, Father. And so in verse 25, so Jehoshaphat and his men went to carry off their plunder and they found among them a great amount of equipment and clothing and also articles of value more than they could take away. You know that Bible verse that says the wealth of the wicked belong to the righteous? Um, just go ahead and write. There's a wealth transfer taking place. L listen, there's a wealth transfer taking place in the name of Jesus. Let me get that verse. 
Let me get that verse in the name of Jesus. And this is for those of you who live in holy. You've been trusting God. In the name of Jesus. This is your verse right here. Waymaker, right? <laughs> Proverbs. Um, Proverbs 13, 22. Proverbs 13, 22. It says, a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. The sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. And we're seeing it be manifested right here in 2 Chronicles 20. And in 2020 this year, there's a wealth transfer taking place. Watch. You're going to see stuff being poured into your lap in the name of Jesus. From the same situations that try to take you out. God is giving you victory in, that, in those areas. Watch. In the name of Jesus. And it was so much plunder. It was so much good. And it, good, it wasn't no little crumbs. Because God said, I'm preparing a table before you in the presence of your enemies. So we talk about big blessings. Okay? Exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ever act or think. They, it said they found a great amount of equipment. So go ahead and put great amount. Okay? Great amount of what? Equipment. Things they can use that's valuable. Great amount of clothing for those of us who need to go clothes shopping. I'm, I need to go clothes shopping like right now. Okay. A great amount of clothes. And it says great amount of articles of value. Whatever you're getting ready to get, it's valuable. And it says more than they could take away in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And there was so much plunder that it took three days to collect everything. That's overflow. That's overflow. In the name of Jesus. Overflow. 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 And I hear the Holy Spirit saying. Zechariah. Zechariah. 117. The Lord says. Proclaim further. This is what the Lord Almighty says. My towns will again overflow with prosperity and the Lord will again comfort, will again comfort Zion and choose Jerusalem. We're chosen and we have overflown prosperity and we are comforted. And the name Zechariah means Yah remembers. God has, re and it also means review. And so in the courts of heaven, God has reviewed your case and he says overflow with prosperity Receive your comfort. I have chosen you in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And the other one I heard, let me go back. Let me go back. I hear um, Obadiah. Let me see. I hear Obadiah 117. Are, are these the same chapter and verse? Let me see. Well, this is, they, they go 17 again. Victory. Okay. Wasn't that Zechariah 117 we just read? Yes. And now we're in Obadiah 117. Speak, Lord. <laughs> I don't know what's getting ready to happen on January 17th. Father, let it be overflowing prosperity in the name of Jesus 117. And so it says, but on Mount Zion will be deliverance. It will be holy and Jacob will possess his inheritance. And the King James says, you will possess your possession in the name of Jesus. So we're going to possess our possession. What is your possession? All the things that God promised you. Amen. God said, whom he has joined together. Let nobody separate. Right? Levi, I joined you together. Go possess your possession. Go possess your marriage in the name of Jesus. In the, listen, your children. Those are your children. I'm talking to myself. Our children, God promised that he going to pour out his spirit upon our children. Go and possess your children. Go and possess your possession, your inheritance in the name of Jesus. The money, Psalm 112, right? God says wealth and riches belong in the house of the righteous. Go and possess your possession. Go and possess your money in the name of Jesus. He said by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Now go and possess your healing. Go and possess your possession in the name of Jesus. For every situation, you get the word of God to it. And that's how you're going to win the, the battle. Okay, let's go. Let's keep on going. So it took three days for them to get all their stuff. And it says on the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Baraka 
and I believe Baraka means praise, where they praise the Lord. And this is why it is called the Valley of Baraka to this day. So the enemy wanted you to be depressed. The enemy wanted you to be depressed and sad and, oh my goodness, alarmed. But God said, uh-uh, keep your praise because your praise is a weapon, okay? Keep on praising me. And as, you, as you're praising me, I'm fighting your battles for you in the name of Jesus. And in verse 27, the Lord led Jehoshaphat, all the men of of Judah and Jerusalem, they returned joyfully to Jerusalem. Okay, so all the men of Judah and Jerusalem, they returned joyfully. You need the joy of the Lord because that's your strength. Amen. God doesn't want you to be depressed this year or ever. Because when you're depressed, it weakens you. It's, it's like depression strip off your armor, the armor of God, and it leaves you vulnerable. So, so you got to fight against that by maintaining the joy of the Lord. Because God said, I'm giving you oil of, the oil of gladness for the heavy spirit, right? I'm giving you a new dance and such, dancing and, and no more mourning, right? God wants us to rejoice in him. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice because I'm fighting for you I'm and I'm giving you the best of the land because you are willing and obedient and you're serving me. And this is good news. Oh, my goodness. And so... They went back rejoicing, right, joyfully. And it says, for the Lord had given them cause to rejoice over their enemies. And so we are rejoicing over our enemies. And in verse 28, they entered Jerusalem and went to the temple of the Lord with harps and lyres and trumpets. Praising God. I mean, going in. Can you imagine a true revival? A true revival, a true example of victory, of God fighting for you. And he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. So the same God who did this in, in Second Chronicles, that, in that time period, he's doing it in, in, in our time, in 2020, the year 2020. Amen? And it says in verse 29, the fear of the Lord came on all the surrounding kingdoms. When they heard how the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel and the kingdom of Jehoshaphat was at peace, was at peace for, for his God had given him rest on every side. And so for those of you who've been going through so much warfare, step into your, to, to the realm of peace and rest in the Lord. When you rest, you trust God. Right. And you're at peace because God's taking care of everything. He's supplying all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And so you don't have to stress yourself out. Go, you go on ahead and stand on this chapter right here. And be at peace, knowing that you're flourishing like a palm tree and you're growing like a cedar in Lebanon. You have the victory. And, and everybody will see it. You notice the palm tree gets so much attention because God says, I'm blessing you so I can get the glory. It, it, it's for, it's for my, it's for, it's like, you're, it's like God is putting you on display. It's for the Lord's renown, for his splendor. So when people look at you and they're like, yeah, that's definitely God that did that for her. That's definitely God who did that for him. Only God could have done that. And then they're drawn closer to the father. He said, oh, he said, if Christ is lifted up, when you begin to lift up the Lord with your life, right? Then God does use you mightily. It's lifting up Christ. And he says, if I be lifted up in the earth, I will draw all men unto me. And so the enemy wants you to be all depressed and sad because you're not lifting up God then. You're, 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 you're lifting up your problems. You're worshiping your problems. But God is saying to you, continue to lift me up. Continue to lift up the name of Jesus, right? Because I'm going to get the glory out of the situation and, and I'm going to draw all men unto me. And so you become like a walking Bible. You, you, it's like evangelism, like nobody's business. It's, it's, it's just prophetic. Okay. And that's what God, that's, that's what God is going to do for you guys. He's going to use you, use you mightily to bring glory to himself. So people can be drawn to him. And that's why he says, the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth as the waters covers the sea. And so people from all nations, tribes and tongues, he said, my house will be called a house of worship and prayer for all nations. Right. And so 
It's like the glory of the Lord is being revealed because people are being saved all over and he's using technology to do it. He's using, he's using Facebook and, and YouTube and different, different things online, right? To, to build his network, to, to, to build his godly web connection, right? To build up the body, to join us all together, Levi, amen? He, it's building up God's kingdom. And so don't give up. That's, that was your prophetic word. Was you blessed? Who was blessed by this word? Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Number 17. Thank you, Father God. In the name of Jesus. Were you blessed by the word of God? In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. We're going to close out in prayer. We're going to close out in prayer. The word of the Lord is already blessed. God's will is being done. But all we're going to do is seal. This is our prayer. We seal this message in the blood of Jesus. Amen. We seal this message, our progress, our families this year with the blood of Jesus. With the blood of Jesus. And we plant this message in and, and, and chapter 20 of Second Chronicles. We plant it in the soil of heaven. This is a seed in the ground that will, that will grow into a beautiful harvest. It will blossom, it will flower, it will bloom into a beautiful harvest in the name of Jesus. For everybody who has listened to this, for those who will listen to it in the future, we just release all these words that we, in the definition, right? We talk about ziz, flower branch, lock of hair, blossom. We decree and declare that it is so. It is fulfilled in our lives. Jeruel. Fear, vision of God, founded by God. We release that upon our lives in the name of Jesus. Jehaziel, Yahweh looks, God sees us. Amen. And so we're not forgotten by God. Zechariah, Yah re remembers and he reviews the situation, our cases. In the courts of heaven, we have justice. Benaniah, son of God, right? Built by God. And so we are children of the Most High God, a royal priesthood, and we serve his, his son of all sons, right? Jesus. And J-E-L, may God live. God shall live. Amen? And it means treasured, uh, treasured of God. We're, we're God's treasures, and he's given us treasures. It also means God is strong, and it means um, God heals. And Metaniah, gift of Yahweh. And so we're going forth as God's gifts in the earth. Amen? And our, our, our marriages, our children, is a gift. Our ministry, it's a gift. The blood of Jesus, salvation, it's a gift. And we're going to treat all of that as a gift. Precious, right? Levi, joining, attaching. God is joining us closer to himself. We're, we're joining ourselves to God. We're seeking God first. Our whole, ho the whole household is joining closer to God. Every member of our family and our tribes. Amen? Asaph means to gather. We're gathering the harvest. We're gathering together on one accord as the body of Christ. And we're receiving our harvest. Hazan Tamar, split palm to divide. And the only division is in the camp of the enemy because our God is not the author of confusion. There's unity. How beautiful and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. King Jehoshaphat and them, they were on one accord and they got the victory. And so I thank you, Father God, that we are on one accord and we are flourishing like a palm tree. And we are growing like a cedar in Lebanon. And this is our time of, of, of great harvest in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And Tekoa means trumpet or that is confirmed to bring forth a sudden force. And so there's a breakthrough that's taking place. For us, even as we were doing the, the, the teaching and such, a breakthrough, a breakthrough was manifested. He's the God of a breakthrough. He has broken through our enemies like he break through water. Amen. That's what David said. And we blow the trumpet in Zion. We blow the trumpet like in the book of Joel. And God has given us new wine, new grain, and our vats are overflowing with blessings. And God is confirming his word in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And every Jericho wall has been pulverized because we, we've been blowing the trumpet of the word of God from the, from the ram in the bush. We took the horn, right? And we, and we use it for the trumpet. And who is the lamb? Who, who's the ram in the bush? It's Jesus. Amen. And trumpet is, is, is this victory. 
We have the victory in the ram in, in Jesus. In Jesus. And the ram's horn is also prophetic. It, uh, it means um, strength and it means favor. And so we go in God's strength and we go in God's favor in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, I thank you. We, we believe your word. Father, we believe your prophets. We believe you, oh God. And you say you will reward us because we have faith in you. And so, Father, I thank you for just giving us uncommon blessings, uncommon breakthrough every day for the rest of this year, Father God. This is a, a year of reaping what we have sown, Father, in, in 2019. Father, I thank you for the harvest, the blessed harvest that's, that's coming to us in this year, oh God. This new decade, the starting of a new decade, oh God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father God, then, then I just thank you. I think January means open doors, you know? And so, Father God, we close all satanic doors. But, Father, we open up the blessed doors of heaven in the name of Jesus, using the keys of the kingdom. And so, Father, I thank you for all the opportunities that you're bringing our way. Father, I thank you for the overflow of blessings. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Be blessed, victorious ones. And I will talk to you guys later. For those of you who want to sow into our ministry, I'm going to put the cash app and PayPal for those, for those of you who want to sow into this word. Sow into this word. You can. You put it right in the ground and you name, always name your seed when you sow it. So you tell God why you're giving it. What is it? What, what, what is the instruction for your seed? That's what he taught me last year. I did it. It worked for me. And so I tell you, whenever you give, you always give your seed an, an assignment. It works. I tried it. I said, thank you, Father God, for teaching me. And so, yeah, so that's another little nugget for you. God bless you guys. And I'll talk to you guys later. Um, Latoya said, thank you, God, for all you have done and all you will do. We will give you all the glory in Jesus name. Amen. Um, Justified said, thank you, God. And yeah, and all the comments. Thank you guys for commenting. Be blessed. I'll talk to you later.